IDDE, Module 1. Module 1 reviews the background of the MS-4 general permit and the need for illicit discharge detection and elimination training. Module 1 also answers the question, what is an illicit discharge? and will help you recognize an illicit discharge, including sanitary sewer overflows. So all of you, each of your municipalities are regulated for the discharge of, the, of storm water from your municipal separate storm sewer system to waters of the United States. Generally speaking, waters of the United States, as per the Clean Water Act jurisdiction guidance provided in 2008, as a result of the Supreme Court's decision in two cases, includes traditional navigable waters, wetlands adjacent to traditional navigable waters, non-navigable tributaries of traditional navigable waters that are relatively permanent, where the tributaries typically flow year-round or have continuous flow at least seasonally, for example, typically three months, and wetlands that directly abut such tributaries. According to the EPA's website, the definition of waters of the United States currently in effect is the definition promulgated in 1986-1988 implemented consistent with subsequent Supreme Court decisions and guidance documents. The 2015 revised regulatory definition of waters of the United States has been stayed by the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Sixth Circuit. In response to this stay, EPA, Department of Army, and Army Corps of Engineers resumed nationwide use of the agency's prior regulations defining the term waters of the United States. On February 28, 2017, the President of the United States issued an executive order directing EPA and Department of the Army to review and rescind or revise the 2015 rule. EPA, Department of Army, and the Army Corps of Engineers are in the process of reviewing the 2015 rule and considering a revised definition of waters of the United States consistent with the executive order. You're currently operating under the 2003 MS-4 general permit which has been administratively continued. And in Massachusetts, as you are probably all aware, the MS-4 general permit is administered and issued by the United States Environmental Protection Agency. The MS-4 general permit is comprised of six minimum control measures. MCM-1 is public education and outreach. MCM-2 is public participation. MCM-3, Illicit Discharge Detection and Elimination Program, MCM-4, Construction Site Stormwater Runoff con Control, MCM-5, Post-Construction Stormwater Management, and MCM-6, Good Housekeeping and Pollution Prevention. So today we're specifically going to address MCM-3. So what is an illicit discharge? An illicit discharge is anything that is not entirely made up of stormwater that enters the storm drain system. There are a few exceptions, and those are the allowable non-stormwater discharges, and then discharges that may be pursuant to another NEPTES permit, and then discharges resulting from firefighting activities. So remember, only rain down the drain. Illicit discharges can be described by their frequency. They will either be continuous, intermittent, or transitory. So you can think of continuous illicit discharges as a cross-connection ones that occur continuously or nearly continuously. They're usually the easiest to detect because they're running almost continuously, and they typically generate the greatest pollutant load. Intermittent discharges, you can think of them maybe as a sump pump, something that occurs intermittent, so over a period of time, so maybe a few hours a day or a few days per year. And they are harder to detect because they're not running continuous. They're kind of hit or miss. And then transitory are one-time incidences. Typically, like if you have a spill or illegal dumping, they are the hardest to identify during your routine monitoring because you're going to catch them in action. Illicit discharges can also be described by their mode of entry into the system. 
So they'll either be direct or indirect. Direct discharges are via a piped connection. They're usually uh, continuous or intermittent discharges. The examples could be sewer cross connections, straight pipe pipes, or industrial and co commercial cross connections. Indirect enter the via the storm drain um, either by infiltration or um, runoff. They're usually intermittent or transitory. Examples could be groundwater seepage, dumping, uh, outdoor washing, or non-target irrigation. The dumpster actually has, it's at a restaurant and there's fats, oils, and grease in that enclosure area that are making its way indirectly to the storm drain. So what type of stormwater pollutants are we looking at in illicit discharges? You could have heavy metals, you could have toxics, illicit in, uh, oils and greases, solvents, detergents, nutrients, <coughs> bacteria, and sediment. You can have a wide range of pollutants, anything basically that is in uh, polluted stormwater. So to connect the dots between the activity and the pollutant you may see, there's, I created a list of some examples. So from vehicle washing and maintenance, you could get heavy metals and greases and detergents. Pet waste, the resulting uh, pollutant would be bacteria. For lawn maintenance and landscaping, you could have fertilizers and pesticides, and as well as nutrients. For failing septic systems and cross connections, it would be bacteria. For illegal dumping, you could have greases, toxics, or nutrients. If you had uh, lawn waste as, as something that someone was dumping. Swimming pool draining would result in a chlorine pollutant. Construction sites can result in sediment. And then cleaning greasy equipment, like at restaurants, would result in fats, oils, and grease. Here are just a few examples of illicit discharges. Chlorinated pool water, spills from car accidents, uh, failing septic systems, dumped material, cross connections, track out from construction sites. It's sometime an, sometimes an overlooked illicit discharge, but that sediment is considered um, to be non-storm water, so it would be a, an illicit discharge. Sanitary sewer overflows are sort of a special case of illicit discharges. Um, if contaminated sump pumps would be an illicit discharge, and as well as floor drains that are resulting in uh, non-storm water. Well, there'd be non-storm non water discharges. So, so what are some of the indicators in an illicit discharge? If you're at an outfall, and what should you be looking for? Well, unusual flow is a very big indicator, um, and it's a, one of the hardest ones because um, you could have a discharge that doesn't have any pollutants in it, but you're discharging during dry weather. So you could have uncontaminated groundwater flowing from your outfall. So that would be a first sign you, if you have dry weather you want to investigate further. And then you could have pungent odors or rotten egg odors, something that just smells off. You could have excessive vegetation or on the, the other extreme, dead vegetation. Excessive sediment and then discoloration or oils or residual evidence such as toilet paper. There are instances where something that looks illicit is in fact a natural source. How do you tell if something is natural or man-made? Here are a few hints. Foam. Natural foam can be brown, black, or yellowish. It may smell fishy or musty. It breaks apart easily when disturbed. Detergent foam often has a soapy, fragrant smell and does not break apart easily when disturbed with a stick. Oily sheen. Natural sources include bacteria that are decomposing plant and animal material and will also have an earthy or rotting smell. Human causes include petroleum products such as gasoline, oil, and solvents. To help distinguish whether it's natural or synthetic, disturb it with a stick. A natural sheen will break apart easily and not flow back together. A synthetic sheen does not easily break apart and it quickly flows back together. Orange deposits. An alarming sight may be of orange slime, fluff, or crust. It's often associated with a surface oily sheen that breaks apart when touched with a stick. Some types of bacteria feed on iron and excrete a clear jelly-like substance 
that turns orange when exposed to air and is generally caused by groundwater with low dissolved oxygen and high iron concentrations entering an oxygenated water body. However, this condition may also indicate water leaching from a landfill or stump dump. It can also occur when land has been excavated or filled for construction. What's that smell? A rotten egg smell could be from a natural cause, such as decomposing material in wetlands. Especially salt marshes will produce sulfide gases and methane gases. Or a rotten egg smell could result from discharge from a failed septic system or damaged sewer line. A potential extreme situation could be a natural gas leak, in which case you should leave the area immediately and contact the local gas company. Chlorine is a familiar smell associated with swimming pools and bleach and could be a result of the improper disposal of gray water or swimming pool discharges. There are no natural causes of chlorine odor. Sharp, pungent odors can irritate the nose, eyes, and throat. Natural causes include animals, such as skunks, mink, muskrats, and foxes, but typically they don't produce a stinging sensation. Human causes include volatile chemicals, such as pesticides and fertilizers, which may produce irritation or stinging sensation. If odors cause irritation, leave the area immediately and call the fire department. For additional examples and guidance on this subject, there are resources available with photos to help distinguish whether something is natural or man-made, which are included in the reference section of this module. So sanitary sewer overflows is, is a sort of a special case of a Unless a discharge, the MS4 permit specifically calls them out and has specific requirements if you are to observe an SSO in your community. The permit requires that you develop an inventory of the SSOs that occurred within the last five years. And if you become aware of a um, sanitary sewer overflow, you need to report it to the EPA within 24 hours orally and then follow up with written notice to the EPA and the Mass DEP within five days. And this table is an excerpt from the Central Mass Stormwater Coalition's template IDDE program. And it is a method of, that you could start to track and inventory the SSOs. And there you need to include the, the location, um, the source, when it's, the date it started, the time it started, the time it stopped, corrective measures that were implemented, uh, or a schedule for corrective action. So I mentioned that an illicit discharge is anything that's non-stormwater that enters the storm drain system except for allowable non-stormwater discharges. So the permit lists all these types of discharges that are considered allowable. Um, but the fine print is that they're only allowable as long as the discharge is not identified as a significant contributor of pollutants to the MS4. But examples include uh, water line flushing, um, uncontaminated groundwater, uh, individual resident car washing, and uh, dechlorinated swimming pools are just a few. But this list is handy to refer back to. As part of your IDD program, you should have an understanding of your receiving waters and their impairments. Impaired waters uh, do not meet their, the, the designated use for that water body, and the Mass DEP develops a list of these impaired waters every two years in the integrated list of water bodies. And the most recent one was draft in 2016 and it's just recently on its way to becoming final. And you can find the integrated list on the DEP's website if you search TMGL integrated lists and other reports. And one reason it's good to know if your receiving water is impaired because it would result in additional requirements. Is this an illicit discharge? Yes, an indicator is discoloration. This illicit discharge was the result of dumping of a petroleum product.
Could this be an illicit discharge? Maybe. Indicator is foam. However, remember foam can be from a natural source. This is where the sense of smell could also be used as an indicator. Natural or man-made? Natural. The sheen is blocky. A swirl pattern would be expected from a synthetic sheen. A synthetic sheen would not easily break apart or stay apart when disturbed with a stick. Could this be an illicit discharge? Although this photo looks alarming, it is likely not an illicit discharge. However, if it's not from a natural source, it could be an indication of buried contaminants leaching to surface water. As you can see, it's hard to tell from a photo, which is merely a snapshot in time, whether something is illicit or not. Visual inspections need to include both visual and olfactory observations, sight and smell together, and also include looking for clues in the immediate surroundings of the outfall. If an outfall is flowing during dry weather, a sample should be collected and analyzed, which is discussed in Module 3. In summary, the following are links to resources referenced in Module 1.